Hello, kia ora, g'day. I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with your Australia-only weather forecast for the next week ahead. And we kick off today with a fair bit of energy around, um, mostly to the very north and the very south. So up to the north, obviously, that is tropical cyclone Fina around the top end. It is heading directly towards Darwin on Saturday. We have another video out today all about tropical cyclone Fina, and there's a bit of uncertainty about the precise tracking and intensity of it. So we've got more details about that. We're also going to have another video out tomorrow, Saturday morning, uh, covering it as it gets closer to Darwin. Uh, but in the meantime, fair bit of cloud around from that system, some rain just brushing the very north. But the main system, or the largest one over Australia at the moment, is to the south, leaving Western Australia and moving into South Australia. So widespread thunderstorms this morning, some of them even into the southwest corner of the Northern Territory, and cloud building up around South Australia, warm northerlies uh, for many of you at the moment. Further to the southeast, drier conditions, lighter winds, high pressure over the top of Tassie at the moment. Make the most of it because uh, something else might be coming next week. Um, for now, though, you've got high pressure over you, so enjoy that. And further to the north, a bit of a, a southeasterly change behind this front, which produced some downpours and thunderstorms around the northern rivers in the southeast corner of Queensland. A lot of that moving now out to sea as the sun's come up. Uh, but Lord Howe Island might be the next in line for a few downpours. And that front heading off to New Zealand's South Island. So here is the wind map going into this evening. The main, uh, or when I say the main area of low pressure, I mean obviously that's the tropical cyclone, but I mean in, in the largest form, it is the low down to the south here. So that's still producing rain, thunderstorms, and uh, some showers around. Northerly winds, like I say, pretty much ahead of that low. Not much of a temperature change behind it. Into the north here, um, it says category one because that's what it was when we recorded the video, but it's, it's very close to Category 2, so it may well get back there. The Bureau of Meteorology certainly thinks so. Um, most of the international models um, suggest that it goes back to that strength as well. So it's going to power up a little bit more again by the looks of it today as it moves closer towards Darwin on Saturday. And there is that high pressure zone down around Tassie in the southeast corner of Australia, feeding in a southeasterly breeze to New South Wales. But actually there's a southeast breeze all the way along the Queensland coastline as well. Uh, as that frontal system is now cleared away. So let's go into the forecast for the weekend. Kicking off with Saturday, tropical cyclone Fina may well be smack bang over the top of Darwin as we go into the afternoon. It might even be a little bit further westwards. Some of the modeling suggests that as well. That's why we're doing another video tomorrow because there is still some um, room for movement for the system and how that might impact the top end. So we'll talk about that, like I say, in the other video. Further to the south though, there is the polar boundary southwest of Australia. It's not coming in over the top of you, but that is building to the southwest, and that southerly flow works its way up to the Midwest coast. So you might notice the temperature's down a wee bit as these showers and thunderstorms in South Australia move closer and closer to Victoria. A wee bit might just spill over there later into the day. Further out to the east, northerly winds coming down, and I said yesterday they could be just a little bit gusty here and there. Some thunderstorms coming in and they might be severe. So we've got thunderstorm risks around New South Wales and Queensland, but also here in the southwest corner of Western Australia. So we've got a couple of thunderstorm maps. We'll kick off with this one first of all. This is lunchtime Saturday. Severe thunderstorm risk here, right around Darwin, Humpty Doo, other areas further out to the east and southeast could be affected, even if you're not really being hit by the tropical cyclone, you might still get a severe thunderstorm. So keep that in mind. We jump now over to 11 o'clock Saturday night. Now we're into the southwest corner of Western Australia. Severe thunderstorms are possible. Um, certainly a, a large area of thunderstorms possible into the southwest. Let's go into Sunday's forecast. So that's those th thunderstorms I just mentioned here around Western Australia moving through. Some severe thunderstorms are possible as that moves in because the polar boundary, right, it's, it's nearby. It is offshore. It's not coming over the land. It doesn't have to. If the wind carries on outside of that, you'll still feel the temperature drop, and that is a southerly flow, again, working in to the southwest corner of Western Australia. Meanwhile, up in the tropics, uh, we've got that rain band moving into the Kimberley now, and there are some signs that tropical cyclone Fina might actually power up to a severe Category 3 cyclone, but it might be sort of in an area where no one really lives, but we'll still monitor that in our update uh, on Saturday to, to take a closer look at that potential. Elsewhere, there's a lot of dry weather around Australia, but these are the next line of thunderstorms, southeast Queensland and right down the eastern half of New South Wales. 
Now, a little bit hit and miss for some of you in that kind of setup, but that's what we're seeing, these widespread thunderstorms. So we go to our next thunderstorm map, which shows you know, the chance of severe thunderstorms in the red shading there. Um, and that's just a snapshot at the early afternoon. As you go into the later part of the day, these thunderstorms are going to move over the Great Dividing Range. They might affect Sydney and Newcastle and Port Macquarie and other main centres. So you've got to keep an eye on that rain radar and the Bureau of Meteorology for any of their warnings that they might be putting out as we go through Sunday around the eastern side of Australia. Let's go into next week now. So the polar boundary is still fairly close to Western Australia. I mean, it's not walking distance away, but it's it's close enough to be to be able to feel that breeze coming in, that wind coming in off the sea, temperatures down right along the southern coastline. And now into uh, South Australia, you've got two things going on. Behind the low, that's it here over New South Wales and Victoria, behind that low, you've got very hot, humid weather pushing down into Victoria. That's why you're seeing that red tropical boundary where the, the, it measures the, the air thickness so it's more humid, it's hotter weather. Uh, that is pushing southeastwards, but at the same time, this cooler airflow is moving in. So there will be a refreshing change coming along the southern coastline, but not on the southeast and not on the east. That is where the tropical boundary is being dragged further. You, if you're nearby it, you'll still feel it. If, you're, um, if that line is south of you, you will definitely feel the humidity and the heat. But if you're nearby to it, you'll just notice it's a warm and gusty day, those gusty winds moving right down mostly around the mountains, going into Victoria, the ACT, and possibly even into Tassie a wee bit coming off Bass Strait there for you. And we go to Tuesday and the refreshing change, that's what I'm going to call it, uh, moving along to the south here. Now it's not a major, you know, big flush southerly that comes in and goes all the way up to Alice Springs, not doing that this time around. But what it is doing is it's clearing away that heat and humidity from some of the southern and southeastern parts of Australia those that, that got it anyway. Further northwards though, still very hot, very humid, going in right across Queensland, the Northern Territory, uh, and even the Northern part of New South Wales where there's still the risk of thunderstorms maybe severe, especially when you've got that slightly cooler airflow to the south and the tropical heat just to the north. As we go to Wednesday, that southerly uh, that is dropping temperatures does start to move further inland now. It sort of fades out though before it gets to the halfway mark of Australia. So it doesn't quite get into the Northern Territory. Plenty of showers and thunderstorms. It's what you're seeing there in the blue shading across Queensland, the Northern Territory, and the Kimberley, that's the leftovers of FINA up there. Uh, but pretty unsettled around Queensland and New South Wales. But even once you get into Victoria, the Southern part of it, the coastal part of it in particular, with those colder winds off the sea, temperatures drop, and you might have a couple of showers. It's at the very low end of the scale. You know, just literally might only be a millimetre or so uh, as that comes through. And the west coast of Tassie gets some heavy rain, maybe a few thunderstorms and a surge of windy westerlies again before the polar boundary returns to Hobart. So you've got a temperature drop coming Thursday next week. Of course, this far out, that could still move around a wee bit. But at this stage, we are forecasting a temperature drop with a change in the weather there on Thursday of next week. Few thunderstorms in New South Wales, light or not necessarily light, but hit and miss showers, coastal showers around South Australia's southeast and Victoria. And then you've got the thunderstorms continuing on where the red line north of that tropical weather carrying on. So more than, well, basically half of Australia here, the top half, dealing with that heat and humidity Thursday of next week. So as we go to Friday of next week, bigger picture, zoom out a wee bit. We'll start with the polar boundary, which is very messy, right? Looping up and down, up and down. Big storms down here, 960 hectopascals. There was another one, 950 uh, further to the west. So very stormy weather to the south. To the north, not really seeing a lot of the monsoon rain. It's pretty dry here uh, for northern areas. Obviously, we've got these thunderstorms that are forming through inland areas further to the south of the actual tropical zone, but um, further northwards, not really seeing a huge amount of low pressure or storms up there at the moment either. So a lot of things are trying to move. We've got La Nina trying to build. It's basically met some of the threshold for that now. The only way to be locking it in is if it stays at that threshold for a couple of weeks, and then you'll hear it being talked about. But while the Southern Ocean is this stormy, I expect to see spring-like changes continuing to affect the Southern, well, let's say the Southern quarter of Australia, the Southern part 
of Australia still being affected by these sorts of southerly changes that are sort of in the mix. Before I go, let's take a look at the seven day rainfall to try and make sense of it all. We can see the very heavy rain from FINA, which is uh, basically going off the key, over 300, maybe 500 millimeters. Um, the worst of that rain, some of it may be offshore, but it's close enough that it could hit Darwin and other areas. So again, keep up to date with our other video and the Bureau of Meteorology. The rest of the color you see on here, mostly coming from showers and thunderstorms that are going to be popping up here and there. So there is some uh, chance on the eastern side of New South Wales and Queensland of getting some rain eastern side of Victoria as well. It's the western side of Tassie that's got the highest chance of rain. And in Western Australia, the southern coastline and obviously up around the Kimberley. So we've got a, a few things happening at the moment still. I mean, when I was doing these weather videos last year, there were some really long stretches where we weren't talking about very much. Uh, so this year we've got a more energetic uh, spring and the wet season perhaps spluttering still a wee bit for those of you up in the tropics. That's all from me for today. I'll be back again tomorrow Saturday with a special update on Tropical Cyclone FINA. Have a great weekend.